We are officially halfway through the 2023-24 NFL season. This time of year, there are still lots of question marks as to which teams are legit playoff contenders, which teams are pretenders, and which team is actually the best in the NFL. While us fans will have to wait a few more weeks to get our answers to these questions, there are plenty of other teams who showed us their true colors after just 9 weeks of play. Franchises who know that this season is a wrap, and are looking forward to the offseason. With one of these teams being the New York Giants, 2005-2012 to saw the greatest era of New York Giants football maybe ever. Their worst record during that span was 8-8. Eight eight. They made the playoffs in 5 of those 7 seasons, and they won franchise Super Bowls numbers 3 and 4. Following a reign of excellence, it's not uncommon for a front office to realize when the team's best days are behind them and begin a rebuild. And while the Giants have tried, the rebuild attempts this past decade have been pretty awful. Because today, they have a 2-7 record, tied for second worst in the NFL. The quarterback who is supposed to be their franchise guy is out for the season, and there is pretty much a zero young talent currently on the roster for the fan base to be excited about for the future. There were plenty of dumb decisions along the way that led to this monstrosity in 2023, and in this video, we're going to break down what exactly went wrong. Before I get into it, welcome to the War Room. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you're new, and let's get straight to it. We'll briefly discuss the result of each season, then list all the reasons for the failed rebuild, beginning in 2016, where the Giants finished with an 11-5 record. This was their first time making the playoffs since their Super Bowl win in 2012. The season ended in blowout fashion against the Packers in Lambeau in the wildcard game, but unlike today, this franchise appeared to have some bright spots for the future. Yes, their franchise quarterback Eli Manning was getting up there in age, but their receivers showed promise, with third-year superstar Odell Beckham Jr. making his third consecutive Pro Bowl, and 23-year-old rookie Sterling Shepard beginning to make a name for himself. On defense, Jason Pierre-Paul and Janoris Jenkins were forces to be reckoned with. New free agent signing Olivier Vernon had the first All-Pro season of his career, and sophomore Landon Collins Collins was an all-pro, pro bowler, and top three in defensive player of the year voting. In the offseason, they signed veteran wide receiver Brandon Marshall, and added tight end Evan Ingram during the draft. So it makes sense why heading into the 2017 season, New York was borderline top 10 in the preseason power rankings, but these rankings quickly proved to be nothing but hype, as injuries to OBJ, Brandon Marshall, and Sterling Shepard proved costly to any hopes at another winning season. There was little to no production from the offense all season long. Eli Manning's age was beginning to show. Orleans Darkwa being the team's starting running back gave them no respectable running game, and the offensive line sucked. The Giants had the second worst point differential in the NFL that season, at minus 142. They finished with a 3-13 record, and head coach Ben McAdoo was fired before finishing the season. General manager Jerry Reese got the boot as well. Steve Spagnuolo was the interim head coach to finish the year, and shortly after the regular season ended, they hired Pat Shermer to be the team's next head coach, and Dave Gettleman for the general manager position. While the 2017-18 season was very ugly, some fans held on to hope that this was just a one-off bad season. After all, when your entire receiving core is dealing with injuries, it would be tough for anyone to win games. And because of this bad season, New York was selecting second overall in the 2018 draft. They desperately needed someone new in the backfield because Orleans Darkwell wasn't really cutting it, and luckily, it just so happened that one of the most hyped college running backs of all time was sitting on the board in Saquon Barkley. To nobody's surprise, the Giants drafted him, adding another star to their offense. Now with Odell and Shepard expected to be healthy at the start of next season, plus Evan Ingram looking to make a leap at tight end in year two, maybe things really weren't all that bad. That's what some people thought until the team took the field. While Eli Manning had a much better season and Saquon ran his way to Offensive Rookie of the Year, the team still failed miserably finishing at 5-11. The main reason for this losing season wasn't because of injuries or players underperforming. They ranked 16th in points per game on offense, and were below average on defense for points against, ranking 23rd. Yet they were tied for the fifth worst record in the league. The reason for this 5-11 season was because of their record in one possession games. You'll notice that out of their 11 losses, 8 of them were by 7 points or less, and 5 of them were decided by 3 points or less. The best reason for this losing record, simply put, is they were just unlucky, and the 50-50 games didn't go in their favor. Two crucial moves were made following this season that changed the course of New York's rebuild. First, Dave Gettleman felt like it was time to move on from star wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr., so he traded him and Olivier Vernon to the Cleveland Browns. The Giants fan base was absolutely livid with this move, as they felt trading one of their franchise players was the opposite of what you should be doing if you're trying to build a winning team. A few months later during the draft, Gettleman managed to piss off the fan base again when he selected quarterback Daniel Jones, number 6 overall in the 2019 draft, signaling the end of the Eli Manning era. All of this frustration from fans was a recipe for disaster heading into the 2019 season. You can imagine a young Daniel Jones starting for a team where he knows the fan base doesn't want him there, 
and the team's number one receiver was traded months prior to him being picked. To nobody's surprise, they sucked again that year, finishing 4-12. While Jones actually didn't play terribly, the Giants' struggles this year was due to their defense, which ranked 30th in the league in points allowed per game. They also let up the 5th most rushing touchdowns and the 7th most passing touchdowns. Following this season, they did a clean sweep with the coaching staff, moving on from head coach Pat Shermer, offensive coordinator Mike Shula, and defensive coordinator James Betcher, replacing them with Joe Judge, Jason Garrett, and Patrick Graham respectively. In 2020, they had the opposite problem. The defense was arguably top 10 in the NFL, but the offense was arguably the worst. Jones was pretty awful, throwing 11 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, and once again, a giant star player on offense was sidelined for the entire season, after Saquon Barkley tore his ACL in week 2. Considering they went pretty much the whole year without Saquon, their 6-10 record could have been a lot worse. In 2021, it was the same story. Daniel Jones didn't show anything too special in the 11 games he played. The receiving core of Sterling Shepard, Kadarius Toney, and Darius Slayton didn't have much to work with, and Saquon, who was sharing about half his touches with Devontae Booker, couldn't get anything going either. At this point, it was pretty clear the rebuild was a failure. Their final record sat at 4-13. and In November during the season, offensive coordinator Jason Garrett was fired and replaced with Freddie Kitchens. Following the season, general manager Dave Gettleman, who did almost nothing positive for this franchise, called it quits and retired. Two days later, Joe Judge was fired after just two seasons. In the offseason, Brian Dayball was hired at head coach, Mike Kafka at offensive coordinator, Don Martindale at defensive coordinator, and Joe Shane at GM. Finally, after all these years, things started to click a little bit in 2022. The offense and defense were around league average. Those 50-50 one-possession games that Giants fans were used to losing, they were winning, and they finally had a full season of healthy Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Their final record stood at 9-7-1, good enough to finally return to the playoffs. They even beat Minnesota in the wildcard game before getting destroyed by Philly in the divisional. And the cycle of the franchise giving their fans just enough optimism for the future continued. In fact, the Giants front office was so convinced Daniel Jones was the guy, they signed him to a four-year deal worth up to $160 million with $82 million fully guaranteed, making him a top 10 highest paid quarterback in the NFL. But through nine weeks of the 2023 season, it's safe to say that last year was a fluke, and everyone in this organization was in way over their heads, because today they have a 2-7 record. The Giants offense averages just over 11 points per game, last in the NFL, and that number might be even worse, Considering last game, Daniel Jones tore his ACL dropping back on a pass, ending his season. The receiving core is worse than ever, since nobody drafted at that position since Odell really amounted to anything. For years now, the entire Giants team has been, as Stephen A. Smith puts it, Saquon Barkley and a bag of chips. I know this recap of the Giants since 2016 was kind of all over the place, so now let's finally get into specifics. I boil it down to six reasons why this franchise is stuck in a cycle of bad football and false hope. Reason number one, the revolving door of coaches and GMs. This is a list of the Giants coaching staff by year. Just try to count how many different combinations there's been since 2016. Almost every single one of these hires turned out to be the wrong decision, and it doesn't matter who's on your roster, it's impossible to build a winning culture when year in and year out, there's new guys calling the shots. Reason number two, bad drafting, especially with the wide receivers. I alluded to it a moment ago, that almost every young receiver the Giants drafted since 2016 has been a disappointment. Sterling Shepard has easily been the best receiver this franchise has had for a few years now, and he's barely ever even on the field because of injuries, which transitions perfectly to reasons number three and number four, untimely injuries and bad luck. Sometimes teams just get unlucky, and that has certainly been the case these past few years with the Giants. In 2017, following a playoff appearance, their entire receiving core dealt with injuries, which led to a 3-13 record and McAdoo getting fired. In 2020, when they finished 6-10, they probably would have made the playoffs had Barkley not torn his ACL in Week 2, especially since the Commanders won the division at 7-9. Reason number 5, the few positive things they had, they never built on. Both playoff seasons in 2016 and 2022 were followed with all-time garbage seasons in 2017 and 2023. OBJ and Saquon were on the team for just one season together before Odell was traded. It didn't make sense at all for the Giants to roll with an elderly Eli Manning, trade Odell, and then draft a young quarterback after trading your star receiver. Gettleman should have done everything he could have to keep Odell in New York, and even if it was just for one or two years, it would greatly improve Daniel Jones' development and build an offensive core. Also, Saquon has been the diamond in the rough on this roster for years now. It's not tough for NFL defenses to realize, hey, the one guy who can hurt us is the running back, so let's just stack the box and force them to pass. As great as Saquon has been, he really can't play to his full potential because 
opposing teams are just trying to stop him. And lastly, reason number six is that things just never clicked. From 2017 to 2021, this is my breakdown on the single biggest reason why the Giants were bad that specific year, other than coaching. When the offense was good and or healthy, the defense was awful. When the defense was good, the offense was injured and or sucked. When they were both mediocre, they just couldn't win the close games. And finally, in 2022, when they were both just average, they managed to sneak into the playoffs. You can't blame Giants fans for feeling hopeless right now. They've seen this movie before and they're sick of watching it. From an entirely new coaching staff every two years to young players not panning out, the organization just can't seem to put together back-to-back -back good seasons. It's unclear what the future has in store for this franchise. It's unknown whether they should tear it all down and start from scratch. But one thing we know for certain in 2023 is that we've witnessed the failed rebuild of the New York Giants. What do you think is the biggest reason for New York's failure? Let me know in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm going to be making NFL content like this all season long, so do not miss out. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.